Hello and welcome to the performance of the Steam Train Blues. Now for this performance we're just going to have a look at movement one to start with and then a separate recording so we're going to do movement two and movement three. Now we're very lucky to have today Craig who has agreed to come and give performances uh, for us so I thank him in advance for this. Now before he starts playing I'd just like to mention that with all the performances that uh, the voices shown in the actual exam sheets are suggestions only and candidates are at liberty to change whatever voices to suit their make and the model of the keyboard. And do remember that any performances that you hear, it's intended just as a guide only and performers are expected to experiment with their own keyboard settings and to think about their own personal interpretation whenever they give performances. So looking at movement one, this is uh, the movement when the train is at the station and I'll talk a little bit more about this performance after Craig has played it to us. So over to Craig now, okay. thank you. of Steam Train Blues and I'm just going to read what uh, is actually put in the exam sheet for this. So in this movement the train is at the station and at the end of the movement the train leaves the station. To emulate the sound of the steam train leaving the station candidates should make use of the tempo button gradually increasing the tempo in stages. So it's a good idea, I think, to actually have the drums still on while you're actually playing and then use the actual tempo button to get faster and faster. So I'm going to give uh, Craig a demonstration of that now. So if you'd just like to put the drums on for yeah. me, Craig. Okay. That's it. Uh, and you can see the wheel. And if you just... you feel you can go um, at that later stage there and that's something you need to experiment with. Now um, this performance as well I think lends itself to the fact that you can actually do quite a few different voice changes in this and so I think you should experiment quite a lot with the keyboard that you've got and think about changing the voice, maybe have a bit of brass in to start with, then maybe go on to maybe some strings. I'm just making suggestions here, but you know, the performance is yours, and I think it's a good idea to actually put in the repeat mark so that the second time round you can actually do a voice change. Now, in the actual uh, keyboard here, I've actually put in a voice change for the repeat. So I'd like Craig, if at all possible, just to make sure that we've loaded in the Steam Train Blues properly on the CD. 
and then have a go at just playing the first section twice and then just using yeah. the foot switch and you'll hear that you'll get a voice change that comes through. Okay. Okay. <laughs> switch again you'll find it goes to another voice change so if you decide to play that for me now Craig yep. <laughs> There you see you've now got three different voice changes coming through which adds that little bit of variety and adds that detail. So if you're preparing this piece for an AVCM exam for example you will be expected to um, make use of a variety of voice changes in this just to make the piece uh, interesting and to give it a little bit of detail. So can I ask Craig to give a final performance of this? Uh, yep. I know it's uh, quite difficult because I've just thrown these new voices That's on you, but uh, nice. give it a go and see if you can mm -hmm. manage it.